This is Thomas Lyon for Raps on TV here at the NEC in Birmingham for the Body Power Expedition. Fortunate to be joined by uh, Gary and Andrew. Yep. Firstly, gents, how are you doing? Yeah, very good. Very good. Yeah, very good. Very good. So, uh, what brings you down here today? Uh, what are you trying to promote in terms of your, uh, your brand? We're here promoting RDX boxing brand uh, and uh, Hexo punch trackers and sensors. So, using these with, with all our fighters, they track the, the speed, miles per hour, on how fast they punch and how many punches they throw per round. Uh, and it's just a really good way of tracking the progress, tracking the, how they punch, all the technical stuff. Andrew does the sports science side of it, so I should really pass them uh, because he, he kind of really does the high-end stuff with, with all my players. So, so we, we do a mix, so we, we do obviously all the usual athlete testing, strength conditioning, mobility. We use technology like the Hexo to measure obviously punch speed and track all the time. And then we use like the clean pods, we use that to measure hand speed reaction time. And we kind of try and put together a profile of the fighter so that we can look through sparring rounds, we can look to see where they're starting to dip, and we can start to look at the biomechanics and try and fight through the box a little bit. So kind of really what we do is try and bring a lot of more modern sports science into boxing, yeah. and we're seeing fantastic results with it. Yeah, in terms of uh, boxing, obviously a massive sport in the UK, yeah. Yeah. how integral is having the sports nutrition side of things to help athletes progress? It's, it's, it's part and part, you can't out-train a bad diet. No. So you have to have the nutrition, you have to have everything right. You, you, you do have to bring the sports science into it. For high performance with any athlete, you've got to have that in. And uh, I think more and more trainers are bringing these guys in just to get a, a fine detailed look at their fighters. Because you need to know you're, you're obviously sending them into the ring where boxers can legally kill each other. You want to make sure your fighter is completely safe, prepared, 100% and you've kind of covered all, out, like, all angles. I mean, my guys will do from their nutrition side with Andrew, their sports science with Andrew, they'll do uh, yoga with yoga instructors, they'll do strength and conditioning, sprint work, every single thing's covered. And then the boxing side of it takes care of itself. Yeah, we spoke off camera, obviously, you've got a wealth of experience yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. doing this uh, for a long time now, yeah. working with uh, elite level fighters, yeah, yeah. the likes of Billy Joe Saunders, uh, Jason. Uh, yeah, uh, Billy Joe's a friend of mine, uh, I've not actually, physically work with Billy Joe yeah. uh, on a professional sense. I've had him on the pads. I've had him on the pads for a yeah. couple of days and stuff, but uh, it, it was more of a friendship thing. But yeah, I, I trained Jason Easton. Yeah. He's, a, he's a super lightweight and he's the IBO Intercontinental Champion. Um, he's on the comeback path right now. He lost his last contest against Glenn Foote and he had a complete shake up, change of camp. He's now working with me and he's looking for a really, really good comeback fight in 2019. So we're talking about uh, super lightweights, obviously uh, a native of yours, Josh yeah, Taylor, Josh Taylor uh, yeah. Ivan Barancic in the uh, World Boxing Super Series uh, yeah. next weekend. Yeah. Uh, what do you kind of take um, about that fight? What's your perspective? Uh, Josh Taylor is coming through the uh, ranks. Yeah, Josh, Josh is going to beat whoever he comes up against right now. Josh is, he, he's just that little bit special. You know, every now and again you get these fighters that come along, they're just that little bit special. Josh, he's all, ever since he was a kid, he's had that tenacity, that drive. Uh, he wasn't happy with a silver in the Olympics. He got the gold in the Commonwealth Games. He, he's just one of these. He has to be number one all the time, and he's got a really good attitude to the sport. He works hard. Um, he's got a good team around him with Barry McGuigan and stuff. Uh, Cyclone, they also promote my fighter. And um, so yeah, I'm backing Josh against anyone. I mean, he, he really is gonna. Step up, step up, step up, and just keep proving himself. Yeah. yeah, talking about the 140 pound division, yeah. obviously, super lightweight at the moment. You've got Regis Pogre, uh, also on the other side of the draw, Ivan Barancic, IBF champion, a very yeah. tough fight for Josh Oh, yeah, Taylor. yeah, they are tough fights. Yeah, but, I mean, in terms of looking at where Josh started to uh, where he's right yeah. now, his transition phase, yeah. uh, what's your kind of overall assessment of his uh, progress so far? Uh, all, all I can really tell you about Josh is as a kid, he had to be the best in sparring, he had to be the best on the mat, he had to be the best. In the gym, he had to be the hardest trainer, he had to run the fastest, he had to be the front of the, the line when guys were jogging. He's just always had that competitive nature. And I, I mean, when he went to the GB setup, he just went from leaps and bounds. When he left the Scotland team and started working with GB, he, he just moved on. And uh, to be honest, you'd have to be pretty special to find somebody that's going to beat him. He, he is, he just, just that. I mean, you're talking about. Uh, Rigondeo, uh, Josh sparred with that guy in LA. He was only a kid, jumped in and sparred with him. He sparred Manny Pacquiao. Yeah, yeah, yeah he sparred right. Manny Pacquiao when he was just a kid. Yeah. He was only like 17. 
jumped in the ring move with these guys. So obviously yeah, a testament to his progress. Yeah, there. yeah, exactly. I mean, Coloma Rigonda is obviously shattering with Vasily Lomachenko. Yeah, he's yeah, gone yeah. on to become one of the yeah. pound for pound best yeah, in the world. Exactly, so, yeah, yeah. I mean, bringing it back to another slick south for Billy Joe Saunders. Yeah, got a massive fight coming up on uh, May yeah. 18th at Stevenage yeah. against uh, Seifa Asufi uh, yeah. for the WBO yeah. title. Uh, Billy Joe has kind of been a bit inactive recently since yeah. the David Lemieux fight. Yeah. How, uh, I suppose, itching as a fan of the sport are you looking to see uh, Billy Joe back in action? I, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Billy Joe Saunders, and I do believe he, he, he'll win this title and he'll he'll be in more of a position now to to kind of pull on and, and then call the bigger names. Yeah. I think he's one of the most avoided fighters in the world. Yeah. You know, and he's he's a banana skin for every single one of these like top three, the Canelos, Jacobs, none of them want to fight him. None of, they'll talk about it, but they'll no, they'll no put pen to paper because he's a nightmare. He's a nightmare to the pads with. He's so fast and he's such a good boxer. He's got a wealthy experience and honestly, I, I would back him to beat Canelo. I would back him to beat Jacobs. Back on the end. Talking about that, Canelo Jacobs last weekend yeah. uh, for the world middleweight title. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, Canelo got the victory. Yeah. There's a potential fight with Callum Smith down the line if you Yeah, so Callum Smith, that's another it's good match. That's another good fight, though. Skills pay the bills. Yeah. And he's just, he's a phenomenal boxer. Do you know what I mean? That's, that's the. It doesn't matter what they do, it's like the Mayweather. It doesn't matter how good they are. Yeah. These guys, they're so skillful, they can work out a plan on how to outbox them. They can work out a way to beat them. And Billy Joe's got that boxing brain. Same as Tyson Fury's got that boxing brain. Do you know what I mean? They'll figure it out, and they'll work it out, and they'll beat them. Yeah, just quickly before I get yeah, to yeah, uh, Andrew, to you give your opinion on the uh, the whole sports nutrition yeah, side yeah, of things. Yeah. Uh, what's your background in this kind of field? Do you want to talk a little bit to the Rats yeah. on TV audience? Yeah, so I have got my own gym, and over in Blair Gowdy, involved uh, training and involved boxing. I do, uh, I've got a mix, I work with boxers, amateurs, pros, but also work with MMA fighters. Uh, which is one of the reasons why I've done here with Dan Hardy today is to kind of help out um, his set up. Um, I do a mix of sports science, I work a little bit with Boxing Scotland fighters, um, I get some up and coming fighters myself. Uh, performance nutrition, we do a lot of that. So I'm currently working towards my MSc in sports and exercise nutrition as well. Yeah. I think there's been a massive change and I think there's a much better understanding of the need for it, not only for performance but for weight cutting. Because yeah. notoriously boxing has been it's not as bad as MMA, I mean, he's got a notorious history of weight cutting, but boxing's a lot better than that. But I still think people are starting to understand that good, good, good kind of understanding of the basis of nutrition, a good nutritional plan, periodization, can help the weight cut much better as well. Yeah. We like to have fighters in weight, pretty much walking around their weight anyway, so that they're kind of fueled. And there's a lot more to nutrition people realise as well, because it's all about making sure your athletes have got the right amount of fuel to get the best out of their sessions. That's the performance element that's often missing. And I see this quite a lot when I work with fighters and I work with their coaches, that they're not really thinking about the amount of work the fighter's doing, and they're not thinking about the recovery time that's needed. And we kind of put plans in to kind of help all that, and it's it pays big dividends and we, we get really, really good results. Obviously, performance enhances substances from a positive uh, outlook. Obviously, a massive part now in the sort of sports industry, yeah. across all sports. Yeah. Obviously, I've got to touch on uh, recent news. Uh, Jarrell Big Baby Miller in the US failed a drug test on three yeah. occasions. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, that's tainted the reputation of the sport slightly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what's your whole take on drug misuse in uh, boxing? Um, I mean, I'm, well, it's, I'm tainted a... the, it's tainted the reputation of him, not, much, not necessarily the sport. A lot, a lot of fighters that are clean fighters, you yeah, know what I mean? So, yeah. I mean, he's, uh, he's tainted his own character. Yeah. I mean, one, I mean, obviously, I've, we're quite a big into this because I'm a UCAD kind of affiliated advisor. Yeah. So there is no real excuse for it because it's part of your coaching team. You should be making sure any supplements are on the approved list. And you know, especially if a if a fighter does have a use for a therapeutic exemption, that should be in place. And Fighters sometimes are their own worst enemy. They'll go and take something yeah. without really checking with a coach what they're taking. Yeah. And then that's when you find these metabolic chases and all sorts of things. And the supplement market is a difficult market because there's a lot of companies that are using supplements in from China and it's all mixed in the same mat the vats. You don't really know what's in it. So you really need to be a lot more smart on your choice. But again, a good a good nutrition plan, you really should need that much in the way of supplementation. And I think uh, Anthony Joshua touched on it in another interview. He said how once a fighter reaches that elite level, they need to make sure that their nutritionist is in place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, people around them in that time get circular in place. And the information's yeah. there. It's all so there. Yeah. It's all there. So if they get caught out, then, do you know what I mean? It's their own, it's their own lack of research. It's their own... 
stupidity, really. Yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? Because the information yeah, is there. Yeah. The band list is there, written in black and white. So they shouldn't be failing anything. Uh, and I mean, the thing as well is, that at the end of the day, a fighter is responsible for their, yeah. own, their own supplements as well. So it's not good enough just to blame a nutritionist yeah. either. If you're not consulted with your nutritionist, then you should be checking first. Yeah. And, you know, there is a good, uh, if you go onto the informed website, there's a good list of what is being tested, what the batch numbers are. It's like we work with Jason Easton. Yeah. All his supplements are on that approved list. We've yeah, got the batch yeah. numbers, we, yeah. we maintain and we hold the supplements yeah, yeah. so that we know everything it takes is 100% clean. Obviously, not the first time this has happened in the sport. Yeah. Obviously, you had uh, Canelo Alvarez fell a drug test, but Ken Butterol, and Tony Yoko, an Olympic right. champion, yeah. held drugs test, yeah. Yeah. Louis yeah. Ortiz, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. to name a few, but obviously, I'll be touching there, the elite level, uh, yeah. wants to kind of break yeah. into that boundary. Yeah. But like to Andy Joshua, yeah. and see, uh, at that elite level, if you're not going to be enough. Without it, you're not going to be enough with it. Do you know that, what I mean? It's true. not actually going to help them. No. At that elite level, do you know what I mean? It, 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 if they're going to result to that for desperate measures, they're still going to lose. It's not going to improve them. It's not going to be, there's no amount of steroids in the world make me a world champion. Do you know what I mean? Okay, now that's it. Do you know what I mean? It's like they, they need to, do you know what I mean? They, they, they need to have stricter uh, punishments for guys that are caught. I mean, there is because, a big question around yeah. that. I mean, if what, they, if they only fight once a year, what's a six month ban? I mean, I mean, obviously, yeah. you have all the different kind of drug agencies. You've got yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, UK, UK anti doping agency yeah. in the UK, tested fighters on a regular basis 24 yeah. 7. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you think there needs to be any sort of regulation in terms of narrowing the guidelines for these substances? We saw uh, Vivian White uh, get uh, sort of tested positive for uh, Jack 3D, which is an over the counter substance. Yeah. So, do you think there needs to be sort of a narrower, finer detail to these uh, regulatory bodies? I, 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 think, I think there's a lot more education at the fighter level. I think part of the problem is, is that there's not enough education actually on what you can and what you can't take. And I think it's sometimes easy for a fighter that's maybe having a difficult weight cut to look at is there an easier way of doing it. And I think when there's a lot of prize money on the table, it's a very tempting thing for a lot of fighters. And I think it's just mismanaged that, you know, by the fight team in general. Punishment wise, I think there's a big debate to be had on uh, do you centralise drug test agencies? Is there a cross the border type share of information? I think there has to be something moving forward. And I also think the punishment has to fit the crime. Because when you get two fighters in that ring and one's on equal or they're on something else, there is a question over liability in that fight. So I think it's a very thorny issue at the moment. I think it has to be cleaned up pretty fast. Otherwise, the sport, none of we've got the same problem in MMA though. TJ Dillashaw, Bob and Rainbow as well. You know, so I mean, it's, it's across the board, you know, it's in a lot of sports, but we have to clean it up. And obviously, touch on the UFC, a lot yeah. of controversy behind uh, John Jones's kind of uh, scandal yeah. in terms of whether yeah. he took uh, performance enhancing substances. Yeah. He's obviously here this weekend for the exhibition. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think he's working for uh, Vanquish. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, in terms of the cross combat sports, what can we do to uh, sort of cut down the amount of uh, athletes that are going to potentially harm themselves? There's a risk of them uh, offending in terms of the. Uh, I think there's probably a, I think there's a, a there's a debate to be had about weight classifications whether there should be more weight classes in sports. I think sometimes that can help the weight cut because I think a lot of people are cutting too much. They're trying to go up too much. And I think that's one of the big issues. And how you get around this, I think, is difficult because when money's involved and people make their living through money in that sport, it's always tempting to look at the other options. I think it's a difficult one. And I'm not sure what the answer really is. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously, a more uh, positive note. Heavyweight division at the moment thriving. Yeah. Also got Anthony Joshua at the top of the pecking order. Is Tyson he? Tyson Fury. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Tyson Fury is the top of the pecking order. Yeah. yeah. Tyson Fury obviously got a fight against Tom Schwartz yeah. uh, on June the 16th yeah. in uh, America, making his ESPN debut. Yeah. Deontay Wilder back in action against Dominic Brazil. So I mean, out of those three, who would you guys say is going to be the top of the tree? Uh, Tyson, Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury is the number one. Except no substitutes. Right. Yeah. These guys made their name while he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, so yeah. if 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 they never took his belts off him, yeah. would we even be speaking about these guys right now? No. And that, that's it. That's true. Yeah. That is true. Right. Yeah. So that's that is the that is the be all and end all. They can right. say, oh, but he was stripped. And then, yeah, they, they guys bought pantsies to win their titles. Yeah, I think this 
kind of a lot of debate because obviously Tyson never lost his uh, belt in the ring against Fischer in Dustin uh, yeah, Rockman in yeah. 2015. Yeah. Yeah. He's obviously had his uh, time out well blocked him in the yeah. various kind of personal yeah. issues he has to overcome. But yeah. now back at his best, yeah. many thought he'd be And he's an up. inspirational icon now yeah. because yeah. he has overcome a lot and he has come back and he took on Deontay Wilder like that. Like everyone said it wouldn't happen and he did it. So to me, he's a throwback fighter. He's one of these fighters, you can phone, make the deal, done, he's shown up and fighting. So why are the fights not happening? Yeah. And uh, Gary, just to quickly yeah. touch on uh, your uh, client, your uh, protege, yes. Jason Eaton. Jason, yeah. Um, obviously, uh, among the uh, Cyclo and the uh, Stable, yeah. obviously the likes of Clark Frampton, and then yeah. just uh, once moved to the top right now, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Josh Taylor, Chantal Cameron, yeah. uh, all these fighters, I mean, Obviously, in very good hands with yourself and the experience you've got. I mean, yeah. where do you see uh, Jason going? Uh, Jason, I mean, Jason's looking fantastic in the gym. He's looking really, really good. Where his career goes for now is really down to his manager, Billy Nelson, and obviously cycle promotions. Um, I think he'll be ready to go straight into a 10 rounder, uh, even a 12 rounder. Uh, as soon as he gets back, he's looking really, really good in the gym. Yeah, I keep having to give him a little rest time. Uh, so we don't kind of overcook him, but he's, he's looking really good and he's hungry for it again. He's enjoying being in the gym. He doesn't like taking rest days, but it's the same again. He needed that environment again. He needed to yeah. be busy. And now, honestly, he's, he's absolutely he's looking fantastic. And uh, last fight, obviously, Ben Foot. It's obviously been well yeah. uh, documented. Uh, the, the super lightweight scene at the uh, British level. Obviously, well, the likes of Robbie Davis Jr., the yeah. British and yeah. European champion now. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, like, obviously, um, yeah, Joe Hughes. Sam uh, Maxwell. Sam Maxwell. Sam very, very good names. Lewis Benson as well. Yep. I mean, Lewis Benson, he's had, he's had a couple of defeats, but he's, he's a really, really good counter puncher. Yeah, yeah. And I don't think he has really had the chance to show how good he is. Some of the opposition he's fought have not really made it competitive. And Lewis is the type of kid that you can really, you know, you can really counter punch and move and look good when the guys are coming at him. But these guys weren't really making it competitive, so it kind of he had a couple of bad performances. But he's another one. I mean, having Jason Easton be a great fight in Scotland. Really.